this week on 2Ds in a pod at gmail.dod or something like that. Uh, we figured out why we're not using the f- letter of our first names, um, how I maybe almost got kidnapped in Ostrava, and what are their 2020 predictions, and why the hell isn't Cam setting any goals? Are you tired of boring old Canada? Yeah, that's right. You heard me. Yeah, we're talking. Uh, you're tired of the, the, the winter, the, the, the cold, the snow. Are you tired of the, the heat, the summer nights, the lakes? Are you tired of all that? Well, you should skip all that because... This week on Two Season a Pod, you know what? You know what? We travel to beautiful, gray, damp, stone-covered Austria. And you know what, folks? I think you're gonna like. You think you're gonna like what you're gonna see. Cams. All right, that's what I like to hear. So and, uh, uh, sorry for all the mix-ups. I we almost moved this to the next day. Forgot my laptop at work. Uh, had my. Yeah, my microphone borrowed without being returned. Um, not gonna point any fingers, but just a lot of running around to get this thing going. But uh, got to do it for the true fans, right? Well, Cam, you forgetting your laptop is a uh, is is the surprising part for me. Hundred percent, my fault. You are not a person who forgets stuff. Yeah, sometimes I do. <laughs> sometimes you do, like clearly today, like clearly today. Okay. <laughs> That crappy banter was just the way to kick off this episode of the podcast. You're listening to Season a Pod, uh, hosted by myself, Cameron Osborne, and my co-host, Cam LeClaire. He's over there on the other end, Cam LeClaire and Cam uh, Cameron Osborne, and we're back. We took a couple weeks off um, due yeah. to the holidays. Happy holidays. Happy, Mer- Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you as well. 2020, we made it. It's one of those things where you look at, um, excuse me. You look at like maybe five, six years ago and you're like, wow, that seems like such a bizarre number to look at 2020. And then you're in it and you're like, oh, it's still the same shit. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, I, I, I can foresee a lot of clerical errors happening around this time. Uh, of course, if you were writing a short form of the year, if you weren't writing 2019, let's say you would just write 19, you know, it's, you know, 11 slash 10 slash 19 that was sort of that was sort of how you would work but i can see if you're you're writing 20 i can just see something kind of getting mixed up in the uh in the in the shuffle there in the shuffle there but we're back so we're back after uh kind of like a two and a half three weeks hiatus we did have of course game we got to talk about the first live podcast at at uh at your birthday party yeah what'd you think of it it was uh i thought it was a great idea i think a lot of people had fun doing it so you know, I'm, I'm all on board with it. I would definitely do it again. And I think there's a lot of potential for us to do it again for any other time that you come up to Waterloo or I go down to Toronto. Well, and, that, and that's the best part. That's the best part. I heard some great things. I had a great time doing this live show. It was, uh, it was everything it could have been. I, d- I didn't anticipate it being such a, uh, such a focal point of the party. I, yeah. I I really didn't picture truly having like ten people crammed in that little office of yours and just and just having a great time uh, telling stories. Isn't that what it's all about? Yeah, I, I'm. Uh, you know, I'll be honest. I'm I'm afraid to listen to it because I don't remember much of the stories going through. But I've 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 heard from the feedback <laughs> um, that. Yeah, it's, some stories were told about me. Yeah, you could, you might want to do a quick you shuffle around, you know, to sort of see where you go. But of course, uh, yeah, all of your friends were there telling telling us some really funny stories. Of course, everything, some new things to me. Of course, uh, you know we're not gonna we're not, we're not gonna we're gonna leave listeners something to uh, to look forward to. But the big nut, like I knew that. Um, yeah, uh, there were certain bachelor party stories I did not know, uh, and of course, of course, like by far everyone's favorite story is uh, you and Shannon's first date. I think by Classic. far is was was the highlight of the podcast. I'm so glad that we got to kind of capture that and uh, have so many people kind of in on the story and kind of sharing in and how fun and how fun that was to hear both sides too, because you guys disagreed on a, cer- a couple f- elements of uh, of your first date. 
Oh um, man, I'll, specifically, I'll, I forgot we even went into that. Specifically on the type of food that was chosen, I believe uh, you both agree it was chicken, but how it was prepared is sort of the uh, is sort of the toss up. Hundred percent sesame chicken. Yeah, see, I think you said 100%. that, and I think uh, I think I think yeah, someone else said something else, and uh, we're not entirely sure. Uh, but it was a great episode, and hopefully we can do that um, in the future. It was great to hear so much positive feedback from all of our friends too. Well, I think one thing that uh, I picked up from the Zoom mic thing is the idea that came to mind is we if we can get you in town to come to one of the amateur wrestling events, then if we can interview a wrestler maybe after the event or like just, yeah, like after the event or maybe the day after <laughs> during event, someone is public. During his match. I mean, uh, that'd be, <laughs> if we could get, if we could do it like right before, like, hey, what are you feeling right now? Like get kind of an insider's point of view. That'd be so cool. That is true. It, um, I, yeah, I would love to uh, be a wrestler commentary, commentator. Um, I'd rather do play-by-play, if I'm being honest. I think if I'm doing play, I don't want to do color. I think you'd, you'd, you'd be a good color guy, maybe. Um, I, the thing is, I don't know enough of the names of the moves. Like, I, I would kind of... I would be looking for things in grappling. Where I'd be like, oh, he, he can get the head and arm here. He can get the head and arm here. It's like, that's not what he's going for. You know, maybe sweep maybe, under the leg. Maybe that's what actually would lead us to be good, uh, good commentators because you would have the extremely like real physical technical side of what things are going on, and I would be able to expose the theatrics of it all. Right? You know, the showmanship. Maybe you know the dr- the drama, the inherent drama behind it. Maybe I'd be better at conveying that message. I could see that. You 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 know the game for the. The energy, mm-hmm. and I know the game for the the man, man, I don't even know what to call it the tactical the tactical manipulation of the human body. Yeah, yeah, two very different sides, two very different sides of the same coin. Yeah, that would be we you know it's something that we could do when we come up, and there's just there's so many options with the uh, with the handy Zoom H six. We got oh, six. We got, got we got we got six inputs. We got six inputs. Cam, we brought three microphones oh. to that party, but we could have brought three more. They, had, I didn't, I haven't listened to it yet. But was there a lot of like talking over each other? Um, no, uh, only at at, at at certain moments. There's a lot where like, yeah, we're all just kind of like laughing over top of each other. But then sure. um, when people are telling the core stories, uh, we're all everyone is very much so listening. And of course, you can hear all the fun being had in the background and um, all that kind of stuff. All that kind of stuff. But that's in the past. Week five is in the past. It's week six. We're on week right, six here on right. the show and. Um, <laughs> Cam, you know Clown we had forward. we had the holidays, but uh, most importantly, you just got back from from I'm gonna say uh, they were definitely definitely invaded by Germany in like 1938 ish, right? They were on they were um, on that east side of the Berlin Wall. I think they one of the countries was yeah, actually one of the cities we were, actually two. Okay. Yes. Well, I'm just gonna say yes. I don't want to get into the full history debriefing. Here. Cam, tell the Cam, we went, tell the folks at home about your vacation. Yeah, I'd love to, love to. I've been telling uh, everyone. I think one of the worst things about coming back is everyone was asking, "How was your vacation? Are you tired? Are you still a little jet lag? Did you have fun?" <laughs> and the oh answer is always God. yes to all those things. Yeah, uh, answer is hundred percent yes. Uh, you're always gonna have fun. You're going to be tired. You're going to be jet lagged. Yeah. So I'm still dealing with all those things right now. Mm-hmm. Um, where do we go? So we started off in Switzerland. That's where we flew into. And that was maybe the most beautiful place I've ever seen in my entire life. Like that wow. was just incredible. Yeah. Such, such, uh, yeah. such great, just descriptive words right there. The most beautiful place you've ever heard in your life. Not heard, Seen. Seen. Yeah. Um, when we were driving, you just go through a tunnel that, because you're going through mountains, you go through these mountains that were like eight kilometers length. Um, just for an FYI, I turned down my, my gain a little bit. For some reason, it popped. Oh, it's automatically moving up my gain. Your gains. You did have to pop down your gains a bit because, as you know, there is no bodybuilding allowed in Switzerland. Little known fact: it's, it's it has to do with kind of like their 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 neutrality of it all. You know, they feel as though um, you know larger muscles, larger physiques could lead to physical confrontations. So that's why you had to put your gains on hold. 
Had to put the gains on hold. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Actually, but... I actually only put two pounds on the whole trip, which I was really surprised by because every night we were drinking heavily. Heavy, thick, um, thick wheat lagers. Thick wheat lagers, yeah, yeah every night. Um, so, yeah, that was uh, Switzerland, just mountains serene everywhere. Everywhere you look is a postcard. Fantastic. Um, Every, everywhere you look is the uh, just like the poster to Sound of Music. Is that is that that's sort of the vibe that, that I've gotten? Well, we also went to the place where the Sound of Music was filmed too. So the, did you, you guys take that into the account? Specific Julie Andrews. Did you get to do the pose, or is there a sign that says the, no seen posing? <laughs> haven't seen it. You haven't seen Sound. But, of... Okay. No. Yeah. So let's we're you know just let, blast right through that. <laughs> Listeners at home, let's know if you've seen Sound of Music. You know, let, you, let you, know, you, you know what the email is. It's two season of pot at gmail.com. The email account has been flooding lately, uh, so much so that, uh, you know, it's, it's so hard to read them all. Yeah, I think we can also put a list of, I think we can probably start to create a list of every time that you say you haven't seen this movie, because I think it's going to be a bigger list than you think. Listeners at home, uh, you nerds, you nerds sitting there on Microsoft Excel all day, start making the list. Amount of times I've asked Cam, or I've been surprised to Cam not seeing something or hearing something. That's kind of the list. Yeah, something like that. Okay, Somewhere nerd. around those lines. Nerds, you got it. You make it. Put it on a Google sheet. Email that link to two season at gmail dot com. Who knows? There's so many options. Hmm. So, um, <laughs> yes. I'm. I, the thing is, I'm just looking at my. Uh, this is not a good podcast talking, but I'm I'm just watching my uh, my recording thing, and it's it's the gains going up on it, which doesn't make any sense. That's okay, but yeah, whatever. Well, I guess we'll figure it out in post. That's what uh, we got the audio engineer for. So That's I'm hoping we don't get that that echo for. That's I'm just hoping it's the best for the listeners at home. It's great that you care so much, Cam. I, I, I just want the listeners to have a good listening experience. Two season a pod. Um, at anyway, so yeah, at gmail.com. Yeah. Um, we went to the HC Davos game, so that was for the Spangler Cup. I don't know, are you familiar with the Spangler the Cup, Cam? Spangler Cup. Isn't, Spangler. It's like the be- it's like the best European teams, and then Canada, right? So yeah, how it works is you get uh, several European teams, or maybe less. I think like six, five or six European teams that all come in from their respective leagues and they're the top of their league so and hc davos who's the host of the tournament so you get the best team from czech republic the best team from the khl the best team from the swedish elite uh maybe not the swedish elite i don't remember which which leagues they are but you get a bunch of teams that come in and then the team canada is made up of europeans up uh, canadians that are playing in the european mm-hmm. leagues so yep. that makes it fun um, energy you, there was you, absolutely. Yeah, you insane. just sound so excited about it. I was just about to say. Yeah, I'm. I'm just, okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna take off my looking at my audacity. Cause I'm so focused on it right now. I gotta get it, get my head out of the game here. Um, audacity, not official sponsor of the show, but it's not official be. sponsor. But you know what? Cam just can't keep his eyes off it. Can't can't keep his eyes. He off just can't. It. He just energy. can't keep them off. Um, so anyway, yeah, uh, energy there, absolutely insane. We learned some of the most bizarre chants I've ever heard in my life. At one point, the HC Davos fans were uh, behind us, and we thought they were mocking us because they're just, they're just the noise they were making, right? We thought they were just looking at us Canadians and being like, oh, gross. One of the sounds they'd make is, uh, uh, uh. Like the sound and of the sound of vomiting. We, the sound of vomiting, and we're like, they must be a, like just completely mocking us. Then we're like, what is that sound? They're like, oh, well, that's just the club club sound we make. Like, uh, uh. didn't fully understand that one. <laughs> they could um, okay. Also, they, also, I guess this is under the veil of they could have been lying to you. Like, just because they're from Switzerland doesn't mean they have to be all nice and good and blonde. They can actually be mean. Maybe, yeah, that could have been the truth. I don't. Okay, well, okay. The, the one, or maybe. are, we, are um, we trusting them because they're? Swiss? I trust them, and because okay. no, we we chatted with them after, and we became uh, the best of friends with them. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, they taught us the other ones. Um, they're buying beers with us. Um, the one guy, 
he was he didn't speak much English, but he managed to pull a few sentences together. One of them, uh, in his personal favor, was "Eh, hey, Canada, shut the fuck up." Perfect. Roman Yossi, number one, better than <laughs> Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, okay. That, so that was his big phrase. No Roman Yossi um, fans. Big Roman Yossi fan. Yeah. Um, obviously much better than Wayne Gretzky. Because mm-hmm. um, so my buddy had a Wayne Gretzky shirt on. So yeah, that tournament was just unbelievable. How uh, the energy, the building, the fan tent, they had some great trap or like trap euro trash version of country road which is really fun to watch of course you know of course. That, oh that, you know that, that, song? that song's still going over there eh? i haven't heard that song in a long long time did it just and i don't get know there? what the, i don't know what the city was i, I missed that part it was like okay. country road take me home to the place i come from austria or <laughs> no, vienna so this was the uh yeah this was the austrian remix yeah of, uh, take me yeah. home country road yeah, yeah, yeah. They had a bunch of weird remixes, uh, like European version remixes. Also, it sounds that... like they used the majority of the lyrics from Take Me Home, Country Road, and then yeah. just changed like West just Virginia sla- to Austria. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Or just, I don't remember what it was, like, West Switzerland's is my favorite. <laughs> also, what accent are you doing? You're doing, you're doing, is this just like Cam the Scandinavian man? This wherever we were, that's what it was. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, apologize to all our to all our Scandinavian fans out there. Uh, oh, I was promoting hard down there. So everything I said, I just get, I said, "Can I have your phone for a second? I just subscribed to two <laughs> seasons of Pod. <laughs> just just subscribe to Game Five Stars. Subscribe five yeah. stars. <laughs> Take a look at this. It'll be on the pod next week. Um, yeah, beer tent was just incredible. All the tables that were there, so it'd be like five rows of tables. Not for sitting. Everyone's standing on them, jumping, dancing. That was like the dance floor, the tables. And then the dance floor, and then people were sitting on the dance floor? Um, I heard heard that was pretty weird. People used to sit on the dance floor, and they dance on the tables. That's why they call it the parkway and the... No, parking lot. No, parkway. You're you're trying to say, why do you park on a driveway and drive on a parkway? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, that's the one. That's what I'm going for here. That's where you were going. Okay, so who won this? Uh, So you you saw a game against Canada. Uh, Who who won the tournament? I saw two games. So uh, Canada won that one, and Canada won the World Juniors, who we also saw in Ostrava, which is, um, hate to say it, not the best city. But it, but it was a quick jaunt from where you were. You drove everywhere, right? You didn't. Take we drove that. everywhere. Yeah, I took took the autobahn several times. Who? How was that? Did you? Did you? Did you all? Did you all get a an opportunity to just rip one sixty? One sixty. That's cruising speed, buddy. Oh yeah. Um, so I I got the fastest on it. Jeremy didn't want to go as fast as I did, and then Dan wasn't driving because we didn't give him a permit. Um. <laughs> Seems mean, but okay. <laughs> well, it, it just costs more. So oh, okay, like, okay, okay, have Two okay, drivers or three drivers, yeah. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that makes so sense. I got I got our car up to 195. That was the fastest I got it to. And this was, of course, a little, like, uh, Volkswagen Jetta, right? That you it were was just actually, gunning. we were supposed to have a Jetta, and they gave us an Audi instead. Why did I know yeah. that it was going to be a Jetta? How did I, I haven't, I haven't left the country in seven years, and I still know if you're going, if you're getting a rental car, you're getting a Volkswagen Jetta. Yeah, it's just the standard it's practice. Just, well, how, and how and we're like ha- how near Germany, so, yeah. Uh, so they gave us an A4, it was quick. Um, now, I hope the insurance company's not listening, but I'm sure they found it already. We did find a scratch on the car that we didn't see before, and, uh, well, might have put it there. We still can't figure out when it happened, though. Where, where was we the, felt, where, Where's the scratch? Um, near the rear door, so rear right, rear passenger side door. Mm-hmm. We think we think we might have known when it happened, but you think you'd hear a sound, you know, when you get a... Or something so like that. So of course, but. so you're going down the autobahn. You're hitting your 195. No, max. autobahn's safe as hell. Autobahn's safe as hell. There's just l- lane road or wide roads. It's because we missed an exit at one point. Then we had to go to this tiny side street that maybe had the space for a Volkswagen one Jetta Hummer. or an Audi A4. No, <laughs> total space for one Hummer, but would have two lane roads. Mm-hmm. Like it was tiny, and there was these railings, and and it's on the other side, oh. right? 
No, no, it's all oh, right thank, side. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Because that would be that yeah. would be two things. If you were driving 195 and on the other side of the road, that's two things. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, well, if you're on an expressway or parkway or whatever, whatever you call it, parking lot. Um, <laughs> Why do you express on a parkway and park on an expressway? Something like that. It's huh. called the 401 or the Gardener. I don't know. Traffic. Um yeah, so you can go real fast on those. I, I had my cruise control set at 160, and there were people flying by me. It's flying also, by you in nicer cars than the Audi A4, I presume? Or is it all filled some. with three North American friends in their mid-20s <laughs> going to hockey games? <laughs> <laughs> was that? I feel like that was 10% of the population uh, in maybe Austria 25, at that time. Yeah, Maybe probably. 25%. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just a lot of I. I always thought of like I also thought that the autobahn was one road, as in like like one continuous. The, yeah, yoke? that's what I thought. No, it just means expressway in Germany in German. I think I knew that. I think I knew that. Yeah, it's not. We were yeah, several. It, it's of them. just it's just their name for that. Yeah, but we hear yeah. it as the autobahn. Like we think it's like the proper name for it is the autobahn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We uh, so, I mean, the th- cool thing is our um, our car had a little on screen display that would tell you what the speed limit was. So if it was like an eighty, it pop up as eighty. Mm-hmm. But when it hundred hundred, but when it popped up as like autobahn zone, it was just a circle with like four gray lines in it <laughs> that just meant go however fast you want. That's sweet. But I also think- the the speed limits didn't make any sense there. Like, they would have speed limits for 80, but th- if you went 80, someone would crash into you. Like, everyone was going, like, 140. So, hopefully we didn't get any tickets. Well, yeah, hopefully not. Wait, go for, go- for going too slow? <laughs> well, no, I just we're going too fast. Hey, you're going, going, eight, you're going 80 in a 140 zone. Speed it up, kid. No, we were definitely never going too slow, but... Uh, Apparently, they don't really have radar guns there in police. They just have, like, speed traps with cameras. Oh, no. Oh, so. this the big CCTV people over there. Yeah. A lot of, uh, a lot of yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. Um, what else was cool? Um, Prague's cool city. A lot of people there. Vienna. Austri- or Austria. No. Vienna and Salzburg. Some castles. Good to see some castles. Okay, okay. Storm some castles too. Okay. Um what else did I like? I think I think Davos was probably the coolest place in my opinion. We got to go hiking in the Alps. And we got to, once we got to the top of the hill, there were sleds we could rent and we rented sleds and slid all the way down an alp. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. It was like a 50 minute sleigh ride, full track built. Really? Yeah. Five zero minutes down, just kind of... Uh, no, 15, 15. Oh, Jesus Christ. 15 to, 15 to 20. I sledding down a hill for 50 minutes. Like, wow, that would get... That would be a bit much eventually. I mean, 15 even seems to be pushing it. It, it was yeah, just a I constant mean, whoosh for 15 minutes. Well, straight. no, there, there was turns. There was turns. So you go like, you know, 200 meters one way, then bank right and come back the other way. And there'd be like different dips. and Okay. So it's it's not it's not like you know, think about like Blue Mountain like Blue Mountain's a little baby compared to these hills. Wait, is these this a, is this a sled on a track? No, it's just like a toboggan. I'm picturing like a wooden toboggan that has the one little curl, and then you, then then the three of you all kind of bundled up together. The wheel holding, on, on holding on to each other's uh like around each other's giving each other a hug. We saw some people doing that, but we all had our own toboggan. Oh, you each had your own. Okay, I definitely pictured. Uh, I definitely pictured the three of you all in tandem. I think that would have been the better photo. Well, we have a really good photo of it of all, all three of us holding our own uh, toboggan. I was gonna say, was there a photo at one point in the track, and then when you get to the bottom of it, it has like you know, like when you're on a roller coaster, and it's like a little spot for you all to pose on. Well, once you start though, um, you lose each other pretty quickly. Like, it's such a big hill that you're not going to stay in tandem the whole time. One person will pull ahead, then hopefully you catch them because they'll crash. Um, How many times did you crash? Four? Four or Only five? Four or five times? Yeah. I mean, wow. you, t- you try and take a turn a little too quick, then you end up in the bank or something like that. <laughs> 
Sounds dangerous. Or like, or I, I think one time I uh, tried to pick up a snowball and throw it at Jeremy, and then I just lost my balance and fell. Oh, and then you just kind of rolled out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just rolled out. I was trying to do a little Mario Kart attack, but that didn't work. Oh, well, trying well. to do it. Yeah, trying to do a little, uh, a little double dash. Maybe jump over to the next cart. Try to take his out too. That was the game plan. Um, but that didn't work out too well. But yeah, sledding was really fun. Hiking was really fun. The hockey games were incredible. Um, when we went to Aust- man, when we went to Ostrava, that's where the World Juniors were being played. Mm-hmm. The security at this place was so tight. Like outside, all armed guards with yeah, machine like guns. Huge guns, eh? Yeah, that's a thing. Huge that's a, guns. That's a thing yeah. that, and that's not only just the World Juniors. That's a thing that they do like every single day of the year. Is like they walk through their airports and shit with, uh, you know, those AK forty seven looking things, and even in Zurich they have these big guns. And yeah. Dan and I were just like, I don't feel comfortable around these. And it's like, why? It's because they're I don't see them. They're big guns. I don't like them. Yeah, you don't, very rarely do you see guns, let alone like high powered automatic guns. <laughs> yeah, like that's like that's yeah. a, that's the next step. That's step two in guns. One on one. Yeah. So that. That was pretty uh, spooky seeing that, and they patted you down so hard. Like going did they ask, like, were yeah. they asking for your papers? Like papers? They did not. I thought that was they, a thing they no. did over there. Always asking for papers, papers. No, they didn't. I, I wouldn't really know even how to respond to them. Like a lot of times, people ask me, like, "Can we see your passport?" I'm like, "You don't think I bring that around with me? Like that stays locked at home. Like, if there's definitely one thing I'm not carrying around with me, it's my passport. It's the only way I'm getting out of this hellhole." That's a good, but yeah, that's a, you would think you would think you're not walking around with it. You just have like identification. Who's like, this is who I yeah. am, but this is yeah. Like, I'd be like, I'd passport. be like, do you want? Can I give you anything else? Like, I you know, the driver's license works. I'm like, why didn't you ask for that first? Like, that's so re- so replaceable and easily you know can lose that and still leave the country. And you're still um, fine. Yeah. Well, that's great, Cam. Yeah. Sounds like you had a great trip. Yeah, sounds like you had a great, a great trip. trip. I'm glad you were prepared with uh, so many sharp, specific stories, and not just reaching at broad uh, concepts. The autobahn does sound like a great time, though. I gotta say, I wish I, had, I wish I had better for you, buddy. Um, I can tell you a story about uh, how we tried to get to the game in Ostrava. That was a pretty, that was a pretty fun story. Let's go for it. All right, so the. In Ostrava, it is this Eastern Bloc town that, in Czech Republic, that is known for former mining. That's it. And a sports arena. And I think they have a club team there. When I looked it up online, it said, hey, what is it to do in this town? Everyone said, just don't come. It's not a good mm-hmm. town to stay at. Great. Okay. So, figured there's going to be a Canada game there. We'll go see it. There's probably going to be a bunch of Canadians. I try and get an Airbnb near the arena so we can maybe walk back and forth, but the arena is like off a highway, so it's not really close to anything. Okay, well, you know, we'll get an Airbnb kind of close in the downtown at least. We message this lady, and she just writes back and check, I have the right of first refusal, and did not accept us. So we're like, okay. Odd, okay, okay. Yeah, never had an Airbnb rejected, but I guess she will. Um, so we find someone else, but she's like 20, 20 minutes away by car from the arena. I don't know. We'll figure it out when we get there. I buy the tickets probably seven months in advance of this tournament. So I'm like, I just want to make sure I get these tickets. I don't want to get all the way to this town and not have any tickets. Mm -hmm. And you don't pay for them online. It's this, it's a system like I've never seen before. You, you reserve them. And then once you get there. You go to one of the 75,000 Zarkas, which is their local convenience store. And you just scan your little thing, and then they print off the tickets, and you pay for them there. They're cheap tickets anyway. So, okay, we'll do that. You know, It's a little confusing, but I'm sure we can figure it out when we get there. So, we arrive in Ostrava, and one of the problems about traveling through Europe when you don't have a phone plan is contacting your host once you get there. Because yeah. you're just like, all right, I gotta, I gotta find a way to contact you. I, I gotta find internet somewhere. And when you're in the bigger cities, it's pretty easy to find a Wi-Fi. Ostrava, not a big city, and we weren't really near anything, so we had to walk through kind of a shady area. Um, 
kind of the place where you just like keep your head down, don't really look around, don't draw attention to yourself, and you just kind of see like fucked up things on the side of the road. So like the first thing we see is like a stray cat that's eyes like blown up. It's like oh god, you know. And then you turn right and you see like some weird transaction going on behind in like an alleyway between two people. You're like I don't really know, I don't want to know what's going on here. Sex or drugs, um, baby. Sex, sex or drugs or drugs. Tit picks. Hopefully, um, who knows what's going on? So anyway, we're, we think we know the building we're at. Right beside a sex shop, um, it just looks like weird. We're like, we need to find Wi-Fi. So we go to the local grocery store. We find it probably like two blocks down. We're like, okay, thank God we have Wi-Fi. Let me call the host. No answer. No answer. No answer. All right, let's. I don't really know what to do then. Um, so we kind of deduct. Like, I think it's this house we have to stay at. We ring the doorbell, and this lady, goes, hello, We're like, hey, here for the Airbnb. Okay. Uh, Oriana. Number four. Okay. So we, we walk in and immediately smells like cat piss in this building. And we're like, oh, God. Like, what? where do we end up staying, right? <laughs> and we make it to the fourth floor. Or no, we make it to, like, we're, we're not really sure what you mean by four. Because she just said four. Or does that mean apartment four? Is that floor four? It's one of the two, right? So we find one open door and... We're about to walk in, and I kind of stopped Jeremy. I'm like, I don't think this is our place because there's pictures of like families on the wall, and I'm like, I don't, I don't think it's here. I don't think an Airbnb would have pictures of families on the wall. So we we're like, let's keep going up. It was not the apartment, so we got a little <laughs> bit lucky there. Um, and we keep going upstairs, and we get, we're like, okay, I think this is the one, number four or fourth floor, or whatever. We figure, we deduct logically that this is probably the one. Perfect. Knocking the door, and there's this Spanish lady who's cleaning the place. And, and we're like, English? She's like, no, Czech? No. Italian? No. French? No. So we're like, we're trying to go through every little language we know. Like, we don't really... I, I speak a little bit of French, speak English. I have Czech translated on my phone. She doesn't speak Czech. Um, <laughs> you Like, you're just trying to figure out something. And we're both like... We have nothing. Like, we have nothing in common here. And she's kind of like, I kind of get the idea. She's like, she's trying to clean it up before we get there. And she just dials the phone to uh, the person we've been contacting. But that person has absolutely terrible reception. So we kind of deduct. We're like, okay, we just got to wait um, like 10, 15 minutes. So we just go sit in the car for a bit, come back, and then it's all right. Like, okay, all right, we're, we're good. We, we navigated the first hurdle of this place, right? Um. Anyway, we kind of look at the time. We're like, all right, we got like two hours to the game, so let's try and get that now soon. Um, we don't want to drive because then we can't drink, and we don't really know what the parking's like. And we need to find the Zarka thing, whatever that means, this convenience store. Apparently, there's 75,000 locations, so it can't be hard to find one. Shout out to Zarka. So to, shout, big shout out to Zarka, however you pronounce it. Yep. So we're trying to Google like public transport down there, but Google maps doesn't even recognize that there's public transport down there like it's not saying there's trams Mm -hmm. or anything so we're trying to read like local guides and trying to figure it out she recommends downloading this app try downloading the app doesn't really make sense doesn't really provide any insight nothing's really making sense at all so we're like okay well if the tram's not going to work let's try and take a, a cab Okay, great. Let's take a cab. My one buddy goes, Let's, oh, well, a cab's going to see we're Canadian because we can't speak any ink, like check, and just throw a number at us and we're just going to have to pay it. So That's what they know, say. Is that, is that the best idea? I'm like, no, okay. Let's, let's try and figure this. Tr- well, Uber. Let's try Uber. No Uber in this city. Fuck. Okay. All right. Well, we try and do the tram thing again. It's, we can't. We just can't figure it out. Like... We're just like, we know there's two spots it goes, but those are main stations, and I don't so really know where is, to yeah, go you from can't, there. You can't figure out where to go. At all. So, okay, well, let's try and call a cab company. So, I try calling, but my, my like, we have a VoIP system. It's just not working at all. Ah, oh, fuck. Okay, let's just go out on the street and try and hail a cab. So, you go walking down the street. But it's a dead city, right? Even in Toronto, it's pretty hard to hail a cab, mm-hmm. especially with the invention of Uber now. Can't find one at all. So we're like, 
okay, we're, we're really running out of time here before this game starts. So, um, we keep walking down the street. We try and get to the main street. And we go, we got to ask somebody, like, how do we get to this arena? We have no idea. We're, we're not even sure if we're walking the right way at this point. We walk up to this older gentleman. We go, like, hey, trying to get to the arena. He just cold shoulders us. Just no interest. Just, nope. That doesn't know if it doesn't speak English or just does not no interest at all. Like, okay, okay. we're gonna back off. Let's find the next person, right? Find this young couple. Like, do you speak English? Yep. Um, do you know how to get to this arena? She goes, take the tram, follow me. Perfect. So we're like little puppy dogs walking behind this little <laughs> couple, right? And she kind of just points, she's like, take a two, take an eleven. Okay, cool. At the same time she's pointing that, we see a cab, and we're running short on time now. So I run over the cab. I'm like, can you take three? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I tell my friends, like, come on, over here, over here. He sees those two coming, and he goes, nope, and just peels off. Don't know why. No idea. So he's out. Uh, we're like, okay, I guess we'll take the tram then. Also, we don't have any change or anything, so we're not really sure how this is going to work. Jesus fucking um, Christ. Okay, so what I what, know. what happens? <laughs> What so, happens? <laughs> so we hop on the train and it's like a tap system, mm-hmm. but you can use your credit card, but our just cards aren't working. And so we're just like, just sit down. Just don't just pretend nothing happened. Right. Yeah. And, you know, we end up making the arena. We kind of pop off we're like, oh, fuck. Thank God. I guess we're here now. And now we see Canadians everywhere. And we show the security guards. like, Okay, here's our tickets. Can we do the thing here? And they're like, yeah, just go to tickets. Go to the next person and go, can we do this here? Yeah. Like, I, we try to explain it to some Canadians on the train. We're like, did you have that thing where you have to go to Zarka? And they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, is this even going to work? Okay. So we finally get to the ticket booth and we just, like, give them our phone. And the one girl looks at it and then she's like, hold on a second. And then she brings over two other people. And we just see, like, you know, you don't need much language to look at people and they go, like, Oh fuck! I don't I don't understand what this means at all. They yeah. all kind of like back off. Like, what the fuck did you buy? And then she puts the mic on. She goes like, "These expired six months ago." You bought fake like, tickets? No, because I never bought them. I reserved them. So what should have happened is I reserved them and should have picked them up at the check convenience store six months ago. Oh, but there so was you no. Re- I guess yeah. so. You reserved them seven months ago, and they expe- they they it was they thought that was like something that people would order who lived there. Yeah, and they had a yeah. they had a month window to pick them up. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you don't have tickets for this. Don't have tickets, and we're like, oh fuck. And she goes, I have three tickets still, and we're like, buy them, buy them, buy them, buy them. Ended up yeah. being the exact same price, and we managed to get into the game. Wow. So, where were the, where were what, the new tickets? Um, just a little bit outside, like the, we were supposed to be six rows up and then now we're just like a uh, corner of the home team. So probably like 15 rows up. So still good seats. Nothing to complain about. Wow. But and what, just, what, yeah. what game, what game was that for? We saw Canada versus Germany play. The Canada Germany game. Jesus Christ, man. Oh, I'm so yeah. glad you got your, I'm so glad you got your tickets. Yeah. It was, that uh, would suck. It was an adventure, especially when you're in a city where you really don't want to be in that city, mm-hmm. um, and you're only there for one reason. So we got lucky. Like there was a ton of Canadians there, but not enough to fill the arena. So. And now, where were all these other Canadians staying? I don't know. Like I, I wonder why, because like it sounds like the town that you're in was dead, but there must be a town that was like lit because I think there was the hotels hockey. and stuff. Yeah, but we didn't really want to pay for a hotel. Oh, okay. So they may have been staying super close, but uh, but yeah, you wanted to get a little bit off the grid, just get the real experience of Ostrava, you know? Just get the real experience of shitty people. Apparently, thanks for uh, I can cross that one off the list of places I'll ever visit. Sounds like it sucks and picks because i'm just picturing especially like the place where you're staying i'm picturing a gray like it's very gray <laughs> stone it was it was just very gray not uh, cobblestone like just super like upright buildings kind of in like just industrial. straight up. yeah no yeah, just awnings. straight up the first thing jeremy knows when we pulled in tonight says it's not often you see the nuclear facilities like you see in the simpsons but in real life yeah it's like a little damp also kind of like perpetually damp 
Yeah. Uh, which sounds fat. Which uh, which sounds uh, which sounds just flat out terrible. Well, that's great, Cam. I'm glad you finally got to see that game, and you made it home. Uh, one piece. You made it home in one piece, and you're ready. You're ready for what's next. Whatever's next, you know. You know what I'm saying? Uh, go, going to Ireland next. Next. Next trip. Now that I got the travel bug, and me can't stop, baby. Can't stop. I won't get, stop. Can't stop. Won't stop. Off to Ireland, uh, where I presume it's also going to be pretty damp and gray, and I'm picturing a lot of cobblestones. Very uh, similar. Very. <laughs> you yeah. really got that travel bug and really diversifying your travel portfolio. Well, Cam, you're back, and that's uh, and that's great news because uh, it's a new year. Yeah. You know, we've got uh, everyone's got a fresh, fresh new start, new beginnings. But um, yeah. it's you set any goals for this year, Cam? Absolutely not, Cam. It's uh, it's <laughs> absolutely. You don't not. believe tw- in goals? Why not? Uh, because. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to make predictions that are going to be. I don't want to. Oh, I don't want to say something that's not going to happen, right? Because nothing looks, nothing looks more foolish than when you make a prediction and then like something like that doesn't come true. Uh, because this is twenty twenty, so um, I don't want to look bad with some crazy ass predictions. So Cam, what you're going to get right now are the top five things that people predicted would be happening in twenty twenty. Here's a top five. Here are five. Five, things, five, 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 Two season a pod. Let us know. <laughs> Please let us know. Okay, yeah. Cam. Here's what you're gonna get. You know, um, of course, sci- of course, people have been predicting things for many years. Futurists. That's an actual thing. You can be a, a futurist or people who like believe in what the future might be. Things like that. Scientists. I've said a lot of things, and I have given you, or I will be giving you, my top five things people have said that would be happening in 2020. Coming in on number five. Um, regional weather control. Can you picture that, eh? In 1964, a study by a man named Theodore J. Gordon believed that by the year 2020, we would be able to control uh, weather uh, specific weather patterns in areas to avoid things like droughts and flooding. Hmm. And said it wouldn't. And said it wouldn't be able to do on a, a global scale yet, but we will be well past the experimental stage. So uh, where are we then? I, we we can't control the weather, so I think. I that, think they do in Saudi Arabia. I think they make it rain in Saudi Arabia. They make it rain on them hoes. I tell you that much. I no. Uh, well, yes and no. <laughs> well, well, yes and oh yeah. I guess they really don't. Uh, they don't rain them on them hoes. Um, which is no, yeah, they, which which is crazy. So yeah, but this guy predicted yeah you could just make it rain, or make it sunny, or make it uh, make it do whatever the hell you want, which sounds weird. Uh, but he did gray. also predict. Make it gray Germany uh, vibes. Uh, He did also predict um, later on that AI would help us in our day-to-day life and that by 2020, a universal language that all humanity would be able to communicate in would exist. Emojis. Emojis, baby. So we got it right on one thing, but regional weather control is certainly not. Coming in at number four. For you, Cam. Coming in at number four, apes working for humans. Now, this is, uh, is going to be pretty common. In 1967, a uh, chemist named Glenn T. Seaborg, who actually discovered plutonium, was a Nobel Prize winner, etc., uh, wrote a study entitled Women and the Year 2000, <laughs> where he believed that by 2020, human beings would be employing intelligent ape chauffeurs. Those were his exact words. That would be capable of performing manual labor, and even going as far as saying that any house without a robot in the broom closet could have live-in apes to do all cleaning and gardening chores. Uh, he also hypothesized that the use of well-trained apes may actually decrease the number of automobile accidents every year. Imagine hmm. that. Imagine that. Well, I think he was uh, shooting a little bit high. Maybe on the ape thing, it was a little bit bizarre that they thought that was... Uh... They really going thought that apes way. were going to be, like, the, the thing of the future. It was like, no, yeah. no, we're going to train apes. Let's put all of our money in apes. 
Uh, this is all real. This is all out there. And uh, just for folks at home, I just want to co- just, just we'll cover in our tracks. I know, like I said earlier, this man wrote the title of the piece is called Women and the Year 2000. Um, his his ape beliefs are just kind of like um, it's like a side p- plot. His the main point of the uh, the main point of the thing that he's writing about is actually uh, talking how women are going to progress out of the, you know, out out of the mate you know working in the house role and into the workforce and all those sorts of oh, things well, great, so let's just great. say his, his views on apes were far different than his uh <laughs> i just want i just want to separate those two things good well i i'll you know what a little kudos for him kudos to him uh coming at number three cam it's uh you know we're all we're all trying to make gains we're all trying to make gains but uh coming at number three it was predicted that eating would no longer be necessary, and this Jeez. wasn't Who even made too that? long. This wasn't even too long ago. So, um, in 2005, this dude uh, Ray Kurzweil wrote in a book: uh, "The singularity is near when humans transcend biology." And he said that by 2020, nano uh, humans would have created nanobots capable of entering the bloodstream to feed cells and extract waste, and as a result, will render the mode of food consumption we know to be obsolete. Did he have any ideas how to do it, or just kind of like throwing, I, I throwing I, ideas out there? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think. Uh, well, yeah, of course. This so this is another one of these futurist dudes, but I guess they. You know, I guess these people, these men, look at like patterns I, and yeah, we're ideas guys. We're ideas guys. You know? They're idea guys, right? You know, I mean, what? Uh, you know, it's uh, it's not all I just bad imma- though. I it's imagine this guy though. going on like dragons then, being like, I got an idea. <laughs> okay, nanobots. <laughs> To replace eating. It's like, that sounds great. How are you going to do it? You're like, I'm the ideas guy. Listen, I'm asking for seven million thousand trillion dollars. And they're like, do you have a business plan? They're like, hear me out. Nanobots replacing food. Do you like it or don't like it? Just tell me straight up. So I have an idea. So I have an idea for a food, for a pill that you eat. And then uh, it fills you up com- entirely. It gives you all the nutrients you need, all the calories you need. Uh, and you don't have to like actually eat that much food. You just take one pill a day. Powerful. Yeah. Well, I mean, great. But what about? Oh, I gotta tell you about this. Sorry to detour, but I had one of the most amazing foods ever when I was in Vienna. Are you sorry to detour though? I can save it for after. I mean, we did just give you a, a solid twenty-five minutes of uh, of Vienna talk. I'll save it for after. What's the food? It's a hot dog that, instead of a bun, you get a baguette and then poke a hole in the middle, and then you fill the hole with mustard and ketchup, and then you stick a sausage in it. There we go, folks. The Cam's Cam's fucking mustard hole. Love uh, it. Have it. Have one at your local uh, Vienna gonna, cafe. Just yeah, go to your up for it. Ask All right, for the num- Cam. Ask for the Cam Mayo <laughs> special. Ooh. It uh, it comes it comes hot with the mustard. Give me number three, buddy. Or was that I'll, number three? I'll, that was number three. I'll give you number okay, two. Give me number though. two. Give me number two. I'll give you number two. Uh, the prediction that all women will be Amazons. Uh, what does that this, mean? Yeah, this one's this one's wild. So in 1950, Associate Press writer Dorothy Rowe wrote in the Smithsonian Magazine. That uh, she believed that by the year 2020, women will be shaped like Amazon fighters who will be all more than six feet tall, will wear a size 11 shoe, will have shoulders like a wrestler, and muscles like a truck driver. What was uh, her theory? <laughs> she believed that um, the, um, all women could achieve this uh, through uh, the proper balance of vitamins, proteins, minerals that would produce women's uh, maximum bodily efficiency. She also goes into a lot of detail about um, all women's hair will be cut short to not get in their way of the work since they'll be doing like a lot of the work that men are doing. So a lot of the physical labor, uh, uh, she says women will wear slacks well equipped with deep pockets for food capsules, which she will eat instead of meat and potatoes. So this one's this one's a little all over the place. I think I saw a local wrestler that, that pulled off something like that. No. Uh-huh. A little, uh, little Smithsonian look. Well, yeah, this yeah. is just, yeah, she just, I think this woman just, you know, reaching, just reaching for the stars. I mean, to think anybody, like either men or women are all over six feet tall with a, with a size 11 shoe. Uh, like that's, that's, a, that's a high feat for anybody. But she also believed in these food pills. I'm telling you, it's not too far off. Hmm. 
Ma- well, imagine, I, Cam, uh, one pill you take, all the calories, it fills you up, all the God, nutrients. It's, it's got to be an expensive pill, though. But a bad, or a thick too. Like it, it, this may be like a three pound pill. That you kind of have to like shove down your throat. Oh boy, that'd be nasty. You have to have someone like behind you ready to like Heimlich it up or something, <laughs> or something just to yeah. get. Yeah, never sure if it's gonna get down. You're never Lunchtime, sure. Once time, everyone getting their uh, just a big old circle. That's what they do. They, they'll have the, the, so you give the pill. The, the lunch lady will give you the pill, and then another lunch lady is behind you, like like waiting to like kind of cough you up if you if you can't make it down it's perfect for high hmm. schools it's perfect for yeah any cla- any any food court environment hmm. cam you're not on board with this idea and i don't no, no, know no, man. why i just i just need a better pitch I need a better pitch that's the pitch that's the pitch. i just i just did it you, you can either die or not die that's the pitch i mean that's a pretty good pitch but what if i do want to die well then, you you still get to eat it. <laughs> you just choose oh. to not cough it up. Ah, okay, okay, all right. I think you're onto something. I'll buy Cam. two. All right, give me the number one. <laughs> I'll, I'll buy two. Okay, Cam, we're coming in on this. Uh, on number one of this top five here, and uh, and this is true. The letters, uh, the prediction that the letters C, X, and Q will no longer be a part of the alphabet. Yeah, that's right, Cam. This show wouldn't even exist. There would be no two C's in a pod. There's no C. What would you replace it with? An umlaut? What could... <laughs> just just an umlaut. Uh, okay, so what happened on this one? In the year 1900, uh, a man by the name of John Elrith Watkins Jr., who was the curator of mechanical technology at the Smithsonian Institution, believed that there would be no need for extra, uh, erroneous letters such as C, X, and Q. He would uh, later say he uh, also in the same mean? report or uh, letters that well don't matter to him. He said that uh, human beings would be spelling mostly by sound and would be communicating with condensed words expressing condensed ideas. Uh, so yeah, he pretty much I think so yeah we take out the letters that don't matter <laughs> like cx and q, and then start speaking in shorter little bits to com- communicate uh, the messages that we're trying to say. Hmm. So shortening words. That would be a, if that one helps. Uh, it's not all bad emojis. though. Emojis. Because, <laughs> emojis. We're back to emojis. See, exactly. Universal language. It's not all bad though because uh, in the same production, uh, sorry, in the same publication, the Watkins did uh, predict mass production of fruits and vegetables using high-powered lights that would replicate the sun. And he uh, nailed it. He, uh, he nailed it. He also predicted the the power of cameras getting stronger and stronger, and saying one day a man in America could watch live events occurring in China. Nailed it. Big old photog. Big old creep. Too, you know, uh, just he who wanted to see further distances with cameras. It's kind of creepy. It's a that's a creepy thing to want to just do. I think that's pretty incredible. They nailed a few of those guesses, though. A few, well, a few of these people actually predicted, uh, you know, some shit that actually kind of happened. You know, which is kind of fun. Well, there you have it, and that's and that's what life's like. Well, that's what life was supposed to be like in twenty twenty. Yeah, impressive. We didn't quite we didn't quite make it there, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> hey, it's not over yet, baby. Now that it's got these I guess, ideas, I guess. Yeah, we, 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 yeah, we have one year. Okay, Cam, we have one year to make all these things happen. We have to remove three letters from the alphabet. Folks at home, you more than well participate in the uh, Top 5 2020 Challenge, which is uh, maybe just t- doing the simple things in your day-to-day life to remove the letters C, X, and Q uh, from your vocabulary, from your vernacular. Right. Send that it, it, to it would be difficult. C two D's in a pod at gmail dot dom. Dot <laughs> <laughs> dom. See what I did there? <laughs> two D's in a two D's in a pod at Gmail. No, I <laughs> do put. Oh, I can't even say it. I can't even say. It. You heard it here, right, <laughs> folks? Cam, can you try that again, please? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, two D's in a pod at gmail dot dom. At gmail.dom. Perfect. Perfect. Let us know. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you think. And that's it. Okay. That's what I got Where for my top five. Here? Where do we go Dope. from here? Jeez. Good work. Very impressed. 
So we got two things we can, uh, depending on time, we can either do uh, our favorite. Well, we got two games we could play. We can do uh, free on Kajij, which we always have in our back pocket, or we just jump right into um, headliner ass What do you think? Well, you know what? I'm so glad uh, you're. Uh, I, l- I love the folks at home get to hear about this uh, behind the paywall information, right? The uh, the uh, the secrets that we probably should have thought about before uh, we pressed record. Well, you know what? Let's give the, let's give the folks uh, let, let let's 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 play a little game to close this out the way we always close out the show. The way we always close out the show, except for the except for the last week episode, which I got to say was great, was great. But this week we're right back. With some headline or ass and right. Hey, 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 headline or ass and hey, 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 uh, what what what's fact and what's fiction? Um, so Cam, how about you kick it off this week? Okay, great. All right, headline number one: Four underage men accused of drinking while operating horse and buggy. Hmm. Horse and buggy, right? So uh, we're picturing. Uh, I'm I'm picturing four little Amish boys, um, maybe preparing for their rum springa. You know they're getting ready for the point where uh, they get to leave their little lit. they get they get to leave their Amish community mm-hmm. and uh, determine and you know and go out and try to try to get laid you know try to try to smoke a joint try to right. do some black tar fucking heroin it's rum spring you can do whatever you want just, and just I think a little part bit of, that, of fentanyl you're good <laughs> just a little bit of fentanyl up your pee hole just a little bit just enough to give you that real fentanyl buzz that all the kids the are good, talking about these days the good shakes. The good, the good shakes. Um, so, of course, part of this, uh, part of this Rum Springa event, you know, you're going to be lit. And at one point, wh- I, human beings are human beings. You're going to want to get drunk and drive. It's going to happen. Yep. You're going you're, you're to want to feel the rush of, you know, putting the pedal to the metal, blasting Limb Biscuit, and, uh, you know, drunk on Jameson. Just like these little boys um, want to feel, the, you know, what it's like to ride in a, in a buggy. And drink and drink and still drinking Jameson. I've got Jameson is still very much you know important to these kids. I guess well no, if these kids are like fourteen, um, I, I'm gonna say they're 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 drunk on they're drink they're drinking Fireball. They're drinking Fireball. They've had a couple joints. Um, they took their father Jebediah's horse and buggy out to the big city for their rum springer. This is a headline. This is a headline, and this is in Michigan. Uh, four eight four men aged nineteen and twenty uh, got caught. They were operating a horse and buggy, and they had open containers of alcohol, empty ones. They were just getting lit, and it was nine forty on a Sunday. So they had lord, and they didn't give a fuck. Um, <laughs> nine nine forty a.m. No p.m. p.m. Okay. Sorry, I should have mentioned <laughs> that. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, that's uh, the headline catches most of it. I think the the thing I liked about this story the most. Is one time Shannon and I were driving down the street uh, in Kitchener Waterloo, which has like a big Amish population, and we saw this group of Amish guys with a two four a bush light, and I was like, I didn't know they were allowed to drink that, but they looked like they were about to have a party. <laughs> well, that's why, yeah, maybe. Well, in the Amish faith, bush light is is okay. <laughs> You know, yeah, uh, you're not you're not allowed yeah. to drink Bud or you know Canadian or anything, but Bush Light, um, hail to hail be thy name. Yeah, they were pumped on it. So yeah, good. Uh, give you the win on that one, Bud. Give you the win on that one. Give you the win on that one. Okay. Uh, okay, Cam. Here you go. Headline or asinine. <clears throat> Filming of music video ends in two deaths and six injuries after drive-by shooting. Oh man. Uh so how many deaths? Two deaths. Okay, so that thing sounds completely reasonable. I imagine it was like 
if I'm going to throw a guess out there, I don't mean to, uh, you know, throw a city on there, but somewhere in the Atlanta region where things get a little bit heated and contested, uh, especially with turf, and maybe they're doing a little bit of uh, singing and dancing, and um, a little bit of a little, little bit of a crew warfare is happening in the streets, and they knew they were going to be filmed there. Maybe they just passed by them. These shoots take a long time, and they said, "Let's go pop them." And they uh, everyone hit the deck, but a few of them hit the deck permanently. So rest in peace, because that's a headline. <laughs> Did I nail it? <clears throat> it's in Houston, not Atlanta. <laughs> but yeah, you got it. That's a headline. That is a headline. But I'm close. Okay, where are we here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So pretty much it would this happened at night yeah. uh in the Houston area. Um, around 9.30 p.m., uh, police called to a residential neighborhood. So pretty much, yeah, uh, a bunch of guys with a bunch of cars uh, filming a rap video, and uh, there was a uh, drive-by shooting. They were ambushed by shooters in car on foot. So you were damn close. Damn. Just the wrong, just the wrong. <laughs> you, yeah, you, you picked Atlanta instead of Houston. Close. I'll take it. Close. Good. Yeah, you should. Okay, you ready for your next headline, bud? Or asinine? Ready. All right, hockey game in England delayed after a referee forgets his pants. God, if there's one thing that I forget all the time, I always remember my... I, I, I wear glasses. I always remember to leave the house with my glasses. I always remember to have my wallet. I always remember to have my keys. Uh, I, I have asthma. I'm, a, I'm an asthma sufferer, so I'm always sure to have my puffers on me. But the one thing I always forget are my pants. I'm always leaving the house without my pants, oftentimes rocking just the, uh, like the shirt with no pants kind of look. Right. Um, it becomes, a, it, it's tough. It's tough because sometimes, and I, I remember, uh, you, you forget a lot when you're heading into sports, the, the sports arena. You know, I've, uh, I've certainly, you know when you're coming onto the ice but you forgot to take off your skate guard? Everyone's done it. <laughs> Everyone has done that at least once. It doesn't matter if you have the plastic skate guard or the little the fabricy one. Yeah, uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which skate guard you have. It's the same effect. You put your foot down and you go just go full Whoop. Bambi. Yep. Now, a ref a ref needs to be protected, right? So a ref needs a specific pant. He just can't go out in these Adidas tracks. You probably need a little bit of padding. Maybe something somewhere, uh, or maybe this hockey league in Britain is like super, you know, to the book, and they want all the refs fully panted at all times. Uh, it does seem like a weird reason to delay a game, though. So I'm gonna say it's asinine. It's actually a headline, and you got the answer perfectly right. They needed really? a special pair of padded pants, Fuck. and um, just like sometimes when you show up to the rink and you realize you forgot your cup, he forgot his pants. That's so goofy. That's so goofy. <laughs> I know. It's so silly. But yeah, you fucked up. <sighs> yeah, like I feel like even if uh like if, if they if they didn't have a jersey for the player, they would just give him like a random number and it's like, okay, hey, go fucking play with it. Like you know you know, even that it would be like yeah. super quick. Just or just quick. have That's a backup funny. pair, you know? Or just have a backup pair, exactly. But how okay, can and it's and and it's England too. Oh yeah, where uh, of co of course, of course, you know they love their hockey out there in Britain. That's for sure. All right, um, what's your bud? Cam, I got another one for you. Here we go. Uh, um, U-Haul unveils nicotine-free hiring policy. Employees must pledge to not use nicotine and agree to random drug tests. U-Haul. U, uh, spelt letter U. A, da a dash H A U L U Hall. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if this is like the only thing I can think of if this is like a small test location to see how it's going to work. Just because I don't know. I don't know where they could do this. This would make any sense for them. 
Because, again, who are the people that work at U-Haul? I imagine it's a lot of people that smoke, right? And are they just trying to reduce the amount of breaks that they're having? <laughs> they want to cut off on smoke breaks? Yeah, they're just like, let's just try and make this, like, uh, a good public image for us. But really, we're just, we realized, you know, we lost 87 days due to smoke breaks last year, just in total. Let's just cut this out and see what happens. I'm going to call bullshit on this one. I'm going to call asinine. Cam, this is very much so a headline. This is really happening. And you were actually pretty close on what you were saying. So, um, yeah, so U-Haul, U-Haul International, uh, announced that it uh, plans to stop interviewing and hiring nicotine users, that people that include, uh, like, e-cigarettes and vaping in 21 uh, states. So this is happening in the hmm. United States of America. This is happening in 21 states. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, where they are located, uh, where it employs around 4,000 people. And there's about 30,000 employees all across North America. Because, of course, like, so when you were gone, or like, that's like, that's like a new thing, right? So the legal smoking age is 21 now. Right. That's like a new thing. Um However, uh, yeah, so the company executives encourage employees not to use nicotine by waiving a required wellness fee. Uh, the company doesn't require tobacco users to pay a health care insurance premium. Uh, but the company did say it makes strides to encourage health and wellness uh, because it's, uh, it's great for them. Just like you were saying about, uh, like, we lost this, we lose this much time to, like, smoking days. Like, they lose, like, that much money to employees healthcare costs right so like if everybody at your workplace is healthier nobody's taking you know nobody's taking days off nobody's taking yeah smoke breaks your insurance premiums go down because no one's getting sick it and makes i guess sense. and i guess you're allowed to do it i guess there's not like there's i guess there's no like that's i guess that's not like prejudiced i guess you know because i mean of course you, you have you know you have to be able to you have to hire anybody who's like qualified for the job but if part of the job is you can't smoke it doesn't i guess it doesn't matter how qualified they are hmm interesting i, I, I guess it, it uh, is yeah, it is, I don't a, know it is a bit well, weird well enough it is a bit weird right like picture like a i don't know like a fucking like an athlete right like you're a basketball player and it's like hey we'll pay you this much money but like you can't smoke <laughs> And they're like, okay, okay. I, I don't know. I'm trying to picture where it would fit. Uh, but either way, it's a real headline. Damn. Well, we'll see how that yeah. works out. Um, I wonder how their public image is faced now. All right. Oh, I'm sure um, it's just fine because now you can rent a U-Haul without it, without like the potential of it like reeking yeah, like point. tarts. Yeah, or cherry vape. Or <laughs> cherry vape. A little bit of. Uh, I don't know which is worse. I don't know which is worse. I'd rather smell. I'd rather smell a dart than fucking custard pie. I'll give you that. Yeah. Ah, uh, I disagree. Actually, the dart smells just lingers. <sighs> I know, but it's it just reminds me of easier times. You know, like when I like yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Back in the old funky days. Yeah. Okay, listeners. Let's uh, let's speak f uh, in a uh, let's speak for longingly about uh, how much we loved cigarettes. Uh, go back and forth. Of course, two D's in a pod. Let us know how much did you love darts back in the day. That's two uh, D's in a pod at that's, gmail. That's two D's dom. in a pod at gmail dot uh, uh, <laughs> I can't I can't say that with a straight face. <laughs> dot right. dom. I don't know why that sounds so weird to me. <laughs> Well, uh, that letter that letter we pretended existed is gone now. It's 2020, baby. 2020. All right. <laughs> um, I'm going to try and read this one without using the letter C, and I'll see if you can get it. Two oh men. Oh, my God. All right, ready? Yeah, go for it. Two men adused of gluing winning numbers on Mississippi lottery tickets. You mean tidkits? Tidkits? Which oh right tid kits yep. yeah tid kits tid yeah kits? okay yeah uh okay so um okay uh so Michigan men uh gluing fake numbers on lottery tickets not, how would not you Michigan do Mississippi oh, sorry. Mississippi sorry how would you do that I mean because like it's a sheet of paper so if you looked at a sheet of paper and it had other pieces of paper glued to it wouldn't you would immediately be able to like feel it and see it probably right because it would be slightly raised. You'd That's think the weirdest so. part. 
That's the weirdest part. You know what? These motherfuckers in Mississippi, what, 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 what's the fun thing to do in Mississippi? Crystal meth? It's scamming people. Probably. How, how else are you getting rich quick? Yeah, when I think of like, a, you know, I think of like, you know, a business ethics, uh, I definitely don't think of Mississippi. Um, when I think of, you know, like an upstanding member of society. A shout out to all of our fans in Mississippi too, M-I-S-S-I, S-S-I, P-P-I. Um, one thing I do like about Mississippi is that I use that to measure seconds. I don't do what the old 1,000, 2,000. I, I'm a one Mississippi, two Mississippi kind of guy. See, I count, um, I go one M-S-S-I, P-P-P-I. <laughs> Two, two M-I-S-S-I, S-S-I, P-P-I, three M-I-S-S-I, and then I get winded. I often get winded when I'm just counting to ten. That was a big problem growing up. Yeah. Um, I couldn't count past ten because I could barely make it uh, before just passing out. So I just got to say, I do like I do like you in Mississippi for that reason. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's, it, it's pointless. You ever tried to plank and count yourself? I get to two, and then I just fall over because I'm just so out of breath yeah you're talking to the fat guy here i'm talking to a fat guy over there you've never tried to plank anything in your life you you remember that you you i I remember i remember you trying to do that planking challenge um and everywhere you tried to do it you would just sort of collapse through the thing you were trying to plank on i remember that was really hard for you yeah office chairs are tough you tried office chairs. I remember you tried a park bench one time, and it was, it, it didn't break, but it it bent. It, it there's a real bend in the middle of it, right where your yeah. gut is. Yeah, it's tough sitting on an airplane when you take up three spots, and you have right. to just explain to the person that this is. Mm, I paid for one, but it's a three for one deal, baby. Find but you don't have to. But you don't have to pay more money, even though, uh, even though you weigh more. Uh, you know, you weigh twice as much as maybe, let's say, me, and but I still right. have to pay the same price, even though you're weighing the plate down more with your your size. Lard, just lard. We'll call it lard. Just, oh, it's just lard at this point. Just lard, yeah. The muscles it's, it's, just turn to no, lard. no muscles, yeah. I'm trying to get rid of my right. muscles, you know, just double down on this uh, persona. Oh, oh, double down. Oh, we're trying to get rid of muscles. <laughs> yeah, really trying to become a blob. I'm trying to never really leave. We're trying to never really leave, which is what happens to most people who live in Mississippi. You don't fucking leave that place. You end up too fat and being burned alive in your house like that uh, like that Johnny Depp movie. What happened um, to Gilbert Grape? Yes, we don't talk about that movie. Uh, <laughs> except that even, even though I brought it up, we're going to say that's a headline. That's a headline, my friend. Um, so, yeah, they, they were $100,000 tickets, and they appear to have the numbers glued on. I mean, like, I look at the picture. It doesn't look that bad. But also, it's a 47-year-old and 48-year-old that are trying this stunt. Um, and, yeah, they're getting charged. They're getting charged with uh, counterfeit instrument over $1,000, conspiracy, uh, false identification. Um, yeah, they're getting in big, pretty big all, trouble all the good for ones. it. All the yeah. good ones. All the good ones. And, you know, uh, maybe they thought it would be funny at the time, but... Guess who's laughing now? Jesus Christ. Hey, jet, <laughs> want, jet lag, do you want, baby. Do you, want to try that, do you want to try that one again? Guess who's laughing now? Okay, yeah, we'll use that take. We'll, we'll edit that out. We'll edit that out and post. Throw that in post, baby. Throw that in post. Okay, Cam, okay, ready for your last, uh, ready for your final go at it? I'm listening. Wait, am I supposed to read this like it's 2020? Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, my God. There's a couple battles. Okay. Okay, here we go, Cam. Suspected arsonist gets dole in his stod king in the form of 20 years in prison for burning down nursery. Could you read the first part again? Okay, yeah. Um, Suspected arsonist gets dole in his stod king in the form of 20 years uh, in prison for burning down nursery. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. I understood that, and I don't need to repeat it because <laughs> it's 2020. Because <laughs> it's 2020, so we know exactly what we're talking about. Right. So the um, the presumed uh, arsonist received 
the end of what is left of a fire in his uh, um, footwear, which you leave above a fireplace after burning down a nursery. Um, that I, took longer. Uh, that took cutting out C's, X's, and Q's takes way fucking long. <laughs> oh my god. And I don't even. I, I'm only cutting out C's here. I'm just doing little steps. Oh, we we haven't even started with X's yeah. and Q's yet. Oh my god. How many could there be though? Um, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't even that ridiculous of a headline. I just don't know the coal part. Like that just seems like a fun little spin on it, you know? Where they're like, uh, we need a we need a headline. What do you got? It's like, uh, how about something about it's Christmas? Uh, I mean, Dismas. Um, just. Uh, what, what, yeah, what, what do you get for what do you, what do you get for bad boys? I don't know. Drismus? 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 Oh my god, this is so hard. <laughs> it's, this uh, is so fucking difficult. It's dumb. Alright, it's a headline. I'm calling it. <laughs> That's asinine. What? I made that up. I made it oh, up. I thought exactly, exactly. I thought it was like a funny little headline that someone would p definitely put on a thing, and uh, yeah, that's, that's Asinine. I made that up. <sighs> that was a good one. Um, Thank it you, was a good one because it was believable. But I mean, also it's believable. Like neighborhood cat found ended up in tree. I, yeah, but there's no like funny little bit. Suspected arsonist gets cold as stalking. Yeah. In yeah, the form okay. of 20 years in prison for burning down a nursery. I thought I would have lost you at the very end of it. Because that's where it gets really serious. Like, a headline wouldn't involve burning down a nursery. Also, imagine if that happened. That would be the worst thing ever. If it bleeds, it leads, baby. <laughs> and we'll end the show on that. Cam, episode six is in the books. All right. Good work. Remember Sorry I didn't have the, uh, the energy I'm used to. Um, a little bit... So like I mentioned, a little bit of jet lag and a little bit, sorry, a little my bit of stories little, drowned on. A little, little bit of jet lag, but you know what, Cam? We're so glad that you made it back in one piece and that your European vac that Cam's European vacation went so well and that everyone had such a great time. Remember to rate, review, like, and subscribe uh, to the podcast everywhere. Everywhere it's everywhere, you know that? Two D's and a dad or something like that. No, I no, don't know. two two D's in a pod at gmail dot dom. Dad, dom. Yeah, that's it. All right, is where, shoot us is out. where you're going to find us. All right, well, we'll catch up next week. I'm Cam, and he's Cam, yeah. and we'll uh, see you later. Bye. Cam's.